early this afternoon, we reflected on the words of our Lord Jesus at his ascension. He said, stay in the city and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And he also said, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. We reflected how these words together suggest, first of all, a being such and such and a doing such and such. And we're interpreting them in reference to Our Lady, saying that we must be Mary so that we can be all that we ought to be and so that we can do what it is that the Lord wishes. And this latter point is where I wish to dedicate our attention this afternoon. Now we go on then to doing. To doing what? To doing what Mary wants. Loving Mary, receiving her into our hearts, into our innermost being, means being her exclusive property. This was a phrase that St. Maximilian used to love very much. Being her exclusive property. But with one's exclusive property, one can do whatever one wishes. And so it is with us and Mary. Souls who strive to live consecration, as we tried to describe it earlier, involving the eradication of vice and sin, domination of disorderly passions, and the cultivation of the life of grace through prayer, the sacraments, and the presence and activity of the Blessed Virgin herself in our lives, in our hearts. Souls who strive to live consecration in this way do Mary's will, and in this way they reveal her presence in the world. They appear to others as so many Marys, since they appear and speak and do as she did, or would have them do. They live a life of imitation resemblance in respect of the Blessed Virgin. They possess and practice her virtues. We can say most of all, most essentially of all, they love like she loved. When their life of consecration has come to perfection, we could even say that in a sense they love as her. That is, she loves in them. Mary then has brought the power of God's grace to perfection in them. Christ now lives and loves in them, together with his Holy Mother Mary. One holy soul used the expression, reminiscent of the famous words of St. Paul in his letter to the Galatians, it is not I that live, Mary is living Christ in me. In these souls the words of our Lord are fulfilled. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now pay attention to this word, witnesses. Witnesses, or witnessing, is a concept that has to do with the word martyr and martyrdom. A martyr is a witness to Christ who testifies to the truth about sin and righteousness and judgment with his or her very life. The martyr's death is the supreme statement of the truth, not only because it is made with the greatest possible conviction, for the martyr freely chooses death indeed, but also because it most closely resembles the fullness of the truth about Christ, which is revealed perfectly in his own passion and death. Jesus said, greater love has no man than this, and that a man laid down his life for his friends. And that is exactly what he did, revealing the very greatest love. Elsewhere, John tells us, with reference to the Paschal mystery just about to be accomplished in the passion and death of Christ, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Now, of all those who shared in the ignominy and pains of Christ on Calvary, Mary is far and away the first among them. 
Pope Benedict XV told us in his 1918 apostolic letter into Sodalicia that she almost died as a result of her sufferings on Calvary. These are in fact his words. As she suffered and almost died together with her suffering and dying son, she gave up her rights as mother over this son for the salvation of men, and to appease divine justice, she, as much as it pertained to her, immolated him, so that it can be said appropriately that she, together with Christ, has redeemed the human race." Unquote. So being like Our Lady entails doing what Our Lady did, or what she would have us do. And this involves witnessing to Christ after her own example. So we must stand up for the truth. We mustn't run away from the fight when questions of faith or morals are at stake. Now there are different ways of fighting. Sometimes it is enough to not participate in evil, giving instead the example of our virtuous lives. At other times, we really need to speak out, saying quite definitely and distinctly, no to the person in error or to the one intent on doing evil. Generally, if we are unswervingly faithful to Christ and His Church, to the Holy Father and His teaching, it will not be long before we find our amphitheatre in which to pit ourselves against the wild animals, against the dogs, as St. Paul called them, look out for the dogs, look out for the evil workers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the true circumcision, who worship God in spirit, and glory in Christ Jesus, and put no confidence in the flesh. Philippians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. And we might add, and we put no confidence in anything merely human, but we put our confidence in God and His grace. So, dear little ones, be courageous. If your conversation is indeed in heaven, as Paul tells you it should be, then you will see how reasonable it is to hold and live by the maxim of Holy Father Saint Benedict, for he is, in a sense, our Father when we gather with him in spirit in an abbey church belonging to his order and allow ourselves to be formed by his wisdom. He said, prefer nothing to the love of Christ. Now there's something else that Our Lady did at the foot of the cross. She offered herself together with Christ in sacrifice for fallen humanity to obtain for us the grace that will bring us to heaven and to God if we have faith to say yes to God's invitation to love him with the holy and sovereign love that is charity. Mary's offering is well described by Pope Benedict XV in the words we have already quoted. But St. Lawrence of Brindisi, Franciscan doctor of the church, goes even further. He calls Mary a priest though we must understand that her priesthood is not like that of ordained ministers in the church. Instead, it is a maternal priesthood unique to her, to her alone, who is the true mother of God. But priesthood it is. Now what is the function of a priest? Paul tells us it is to offer gift and sacrifice. Mary offered Christ and herself to God as a gift and sacrifice of purest, most generous love. An act of love, in fact, so pleasing to God that the iniquity of all the sins of mankind was abundantly recompensed by it. So we, who want to do what Mary did, must also offer ourselves in sacrifice. Indeed, here we work out our baptismal priesthood, for we are all priests in a certain sense by virtue of our baptismal consecration, fitted by that sacramental grace and the impression of our Lord Jesus Christ somehow left in our souls to offer precisely spiritual sacrifices pleasing and acceptable to God in union with Christ. We must be generous, for the more we offer ourselves in love to God, 
like little blessed Jacinta of Fatima, the more fruitful will be our love. Now, there are various ways in which we can offer sacrifices to God. Indeed, every virtue practiced for the love of God is an offering which in union with the sacrifice of Christ is immensely pleasing to God. We can offer up a sacrifice of our prayers and praises. Perhaps most especially, we should offer the sacrifice of the prayer of the rosary, so much requested by Our Lady in recent approved apparitions. I would say to you what I love to say to everybody, never let a day pass without saying at least one decade of the rosary. We can offer up also various mortifications and sacrifices in the ordinary sense of the word. As the angel at Fatima exhorted the little shepherd children when he gently rebuked them for their indolence, saying, make of everything you can a sacrifice. Let us not, though, forget, dear brothers and sisters, the sacrifice of apostolic work, the work of the apostolate of the church which is the building up of the kingdom of Christ in the world. This is the mission of Christ, who came to call not the righteous, but sinners. In the lovely book, The Imitation of Mary, the author puts on Mary's lips a lamentation to the effect that her disciple, while having made good progress in the imitation of her virtues, yet lacks something. He has not spent himself in trying to bring other souls to know her and love her as she desires. And this, she says, is a lack of love for her. We can and should keep in mind, however, that our bringing of souls to Mary does not end with her exactly. There is really no better way to bring a soul to God. She receives them, and like a loving and most prudent mother, carefully heals them and strengthens them, nourishes them and teaches them and guides them until they have attained to the full and perfect knowledge and love of Christ and the whole Holy Trinity that God wills for them. So dear brothers and sisters, for the love of God and the love of Our Lady, let us set to work. What shall we do? We can encourage and support family prayer especially Marian family prayer, and most especially of all, the rosary. But insofar as you can, grandmums and granddads who are here present, or mums and dads indeed, try to lead the little ones whom you come into contact with to a personal encounter with Jesus and Mary. There are some beautiful words of St. Edith Stein on this point, where she praises the beautiful Marian devotions of her day, processions and placing flowers around statues and things of this sort, but she says that really the thing that matters and the only thing that will enable that little soul to stand the test of trial and tribulation when the storms of destruction come around, that is, the temptations unleashed upon us by the devil, is a personal relationship with Jesus and Mary. Unfortunately, I don't have the citation here with me now, but very recently, Benedict XVI has said something similar, pointing us in the direction of a personal encounter with this woman. When she is living in the heart of our Mariology, and in the heart indeed, well, in our heart, in our minds and in our lives, then truly we are well on our way to the perfect accomplishment of God's will. To this effect, we do well also to promote consecration to Our Lady, lead other souls to consecrate themselves to her. All the baptized are consecrated to Mary by Jesus from upon the cross. But the more explicitly we say yes to what Jesus did when he said, Son, behold your mother, the more powerfully she will be able to work in our hearts. So encourage other souls to read that beautiful little book, The Secret of Mary. Such a tiny book, such precious gems of heavenly wisdom. St. Louis de Montfort is truly right when he says that this is perhaps the greatest gift 
I mean the reading of that book and the understanding of this secret that a soul wayfaring here below can ever receive. We should also distribute the miraculous medal and the brown scapula, little sacramentals perfectly apt to bring us and bind us to our little holy and pure and gentle mother. And then we should learn about Our Lady. We should read good books about her ourselves. We should listen to those who know something about her when they teach and preach. And we should share with others in a spirit of genuine charity what we know. Talk about Mary at work. Talk about her at home. Talk about her on the bus. But be simple as doves and wise as serpents. The best witness of all is your good example. Virtues speak much louder when they're connected with real deeds than do mere words. Finally, perhaps we could consider belonging to an organisation that facilitates the work of Mary in the world, or that fosters the life and spirit of Marian consecration, such as, for example, the mission of the Immaculate Mediatrix, the Day with Mary, the Legion of Mary, and countless others who do similar beautiful works. Let us ask Our Lady then to guide us also to this perfect charity, which is spending ourselves perfectly and selflessly with love for her in the apostolate. So long as we take enough time to look also after ourselves so that we truly have something to give, Our Lady will help us indeed to practice prudence in all that we do and with great charity to do the work of God, who is love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.